Hello viewers and learners, welcome to the DLED program of environmental study. I am Manju Jain, former head of the department elementary education NCRT. Today I am going to take a topic pedagogical organization of teaching learning in environmental studies at the primary stage. Uh, the focus of the present session is what do we mean by the pedagogical organization of EVS curriculum in terms of planning, in terms of uh, teaching learning material, in terms of transaction and in terms of assessment. Reflection on functioning of two schools will reflect on the situation. Uh, let us observe a picture of transactional process and we'll reflect on that. How do children learn is one of the major component and consideration of EVS learning. What kind of learning environment is required to address the pedagogical shifts in EVS learning? What we mean by the constructivist approach? What is the using wide range of learning strategies? What we mean by the child centered approach? And what are how we will inculcate the values and the skills? during the teaching learning process. We will discuss all these issues in this point. What are the pedagogical shifts in the curriculum and the textual material and their features? We will also discuss here. What should be the role of the teacher in this endeavor? We will also focus on this point. So first of all, we must understand what do we mean by the pedagogical organization? As a, as a practitioner, you should be very clear what you mean by the pedagogical organization. So, pedagogical organization, if we want to analyze, so if teacher wanted to use this, it means how to plan and design and organize the teaching learning processes to meet out the expectations of EVS learning. What are the expectations of EVS learning? Expectations of EVS learning are learning outcomes which we are envisage for each stage, what are the processes and learning indicators. So the expectations of EVS curriculum in order to take into account both the indicators and the learning outcome along with the development of personal social qualities and disposition which is an important part of the EVS learning. <clears throat> Let us see this situation, reflection on two functioning of two schools. If you see the school A, in the school A the teacher delivers lecture. She also uses test book, workbook and answer sheets. And in a B situation if you see, teacher listens to children carefully experience related activities are going on. Teachers give opportunity to children to observe, to reflect, to classify variety of activities, the multi range of activities she is using. Now in the school A you can see the children sit in their individual seat work, no scope for the group learning, no scope for beyond classroom learning. While in the school B, you can say the variety of learning resources, learning resources may be within the classroom, may be beyond the classroom or may be the other than variety of textual material like the uh, adults are one of the resources, news clippings are one of the important resources. So she is using such situations. The children work in a large, small and a very large group in a school B. In a school A, you can say teacher is doing assessment simply by the paper pencil test. While in a school B, the teacher uses a variety of assessment practices, not only the written one, but children are learning through various ways. So she is using the various ways of assessment, the experimentation if they are using, it's a kind of how children are doing experiment, group learning, group learning is also she assesses how children are doing activities in a group, group situation. So you are very clear from the situation then the reflection 
of A school is very much different from the school B. Let us observe the reflection of learning cycle and assessment. If you study this teaching learning cycle, you will find that there are various steps of teaching learning. One of the important steps of this teaching learning cycle is the planning and planning includes the various steps like planning includes the how to teacher identify the learning outcome, what are the key concepts, what are the learning materials should be used by the teacher, what are the strategies which she will or he will follow to transact the material. So, planning is very major component of transactional process. While implementing, transacting the planning into the classroom situation, there are various strategies which should be uh, learner participation based activities such as the project work, assignments, activities which will make the learning process more, more activity oriented. Another major component after the transaction, the assessment for learning. Assessment for learning is a, not an isolated activity. It is an inbuilt part of the teaching learning. So, whenever teacher is conducting any activity, parallelly she is necessarily follow the what the children have learned and what are the learning gaps. So, the assessment for learning is another major component of the cycle and after the assessment, teacher needs to know what are the recording and reporting procedures which she has to follow. So, the complete cycle of EVS learning if you can say the planning, what are the strategies which she should follow followed by the assessment for learning and what they have learned is the assessment of learning which teacher needs to report in a report card. So, uh, the next point which we will say if the, this is the planning, this is implementation and this is assessment process that the teacher must be very clear how do children learn in a early classes. First and most uh, important point is that every child can learn if allowed to do so. So, teacher must be very clear that the children will learn and they should be allowed to do activities on their own. Every child learns at her and his own pace of learning. It means there are variety of groups of learning may be created in a classroom situation. No child is a clean slate that everybody we know and every child comes with a prior learning experiences. We must respect and listen those experiences of children in the classroom. Now, again we can say the other features how do children learn is the learning is a continuous and an ongoing process which is not restricted to school boundaries. It is going on beyond the school boundaries and beyond the test book of learning. So, that point must be always considered by the teachers, by the practitioners. Children in early classes learn better if they are learning through the experience based on maybe variety of activities like role play, learning by doing, maybe through some various kind of out, out, outside classroom activities, maybe the field trip, field visits. So, these are uh, should also be considered while planning the EVS learning. Now, children also learn through their own mistakes. We should not give the such opportunity that we should everything we should communicate them so that they will not make mistakes. We should also give opportunity to them, let them do activity on their own and they will also find out what error they have made and accordingly they will improve. So, that we should give opportunity to them to self-reflect. 
to self learning so the learning to learn practice will be more and more developed children learn in a spiral way this is another major feature of the process of learning among the children because spiral learning means we are also believe that children have their own experiences and their prior no prior knowledge we should use to build the new knowledge so the learning is in a always in a spiral manner rather than in a linear manner and learning takes place in a holistic manner is another major consideration for children's learning it's not going in on in a compartmentalized manner but it is in a holistic way as a child takes the environment in a holistic view it's a gestalt view likewise we should also plan children's learning in a holistic this is not the uh, science this is part is social science and this is part is environment likewise it will not serve the purpose in evs classroom now what kind of learning environment we we know that how do children learn we know the if teaching learning cycle what are the steps but a teacher how she should create the environment so that the best learning and quality of learning a teacher can provide to the children so a safe secure and happy environment encourages meaningful and active learning a print rich environment and maintaining learning corners help in developing creativity making the children more independent and providing opportunity for learning to learn print rich environment is very very important dimension of evs learning because evs learning is very much related to environmental resources it's very much related to what is children are seeing outside the classroom what things are available beyond the classrooms if we will provide such kind of experiences by making the learning corners in the environment keeping different type of objects or maybe the pictures or give the opportunity to go outside the classroom a flexible sitting arrangement that increases opportunity for interaction among children is also a plus point for the conducive environment opportunity for discussion and sharing of experiences evs classroom should be having it's not like seat work is the main kind of activity kind of uh, structure in the teaching learning process if the discussion is more more construction of knowledge will be there if the group work is there more sharing experiences will be there so such kind of environment is conducive opportunity on self and peer reflection is another major dimension which creates more positive and healthy environment for evs learning opportunity to ask questions we have seen that many a times children they are not getting the opportunity they ask question teacher is generally teaching and asking questions and children are replying we should also make them confident they should uh, they, they should frame their questions they should have the courage to ask question they should also have courage sometimes some some information is not maybe right uh, right repeat the information is sometime not right uh, manner be presented in the classroom they should have courage to reflect on ki this situation may be uh, in a better way if we present in a different manner the children participation if you see the various kind of approaches and strategies in evs learning broadly we can say some approaches are where the participation of children is very less we can say the teacher centered or teacher dominated approaches 
like lecture method, demonstration method. While other approaches, other strategies which are giving more opportunity to the children in which they involve in the teaching learning process. So, they are the active learner like you can say project work, field visits, group learning, role play. These are some of the ways in which children participation is much much more and the active learning and engagement in a meaningful manner which give more uh, quality of learning uh, in the EVS classroom that will give more opportunity to the learner to develop processes, they will give more opportunity to generate their new knowledge with, with the less support of the teacher. Now what are the pedagogical shifts? What are the pedagogical shifts in EVS learning and what are some salient features? If you see the pedagogical features and salient uh, characteristics of EVS learning means the teaching learning material, the curriculum and the transactional process, what are the shifts? One of the important shifts in the EVS material is the theme based. Theme based means we are not presenting content directly in an isolated manner. We are presenting content by relating the child's life experience, how child visualize, how child experience this content in the daily life. Say example for water, water could be taken up in an EVS classroom, what are the properties of water, what are the boiling point of the water, what are the chemical properties of the water. In EVS, if in the class 3, 4 children, these has no, these points have no meaning for the children. So, what could be the right way to present the content in EVS? We are taking the content how child, how child uses the water in the daily life, what kind of problem she or he faces in the daily life. Such kind of experiences, experiential learning will be more meaningful. So, accordingly teacher must design the teaching learning process in that manner. Now, the child centered, another dimension or pedagogical shift is the child centered. The EVS material is the child center means we are giving primacy to children to share their experiences and the learning is based on their experiences and they are the active partner. They are the active partner of the learning and the material which we are giving the transactional approaches we, which we are using is the age appropriate. Age appropriate means as per the developmental stages of the child uh, development as well as as per the uh, age appropriateness of their mental development. So, the learning process, we what is our caution? What is the caution of the teacher? The learning process should be more simple because the children are the concrete learner and they should give the learning from whole to part manner. Now, what are another important feature of pedagogical shift is wide, wide range of learning experiences. Wide range of learning experience means it suggests a range of transactional strategies such as because we know children are learning through many ways. They are learning through discussion, they are learning through field trips, role play, they are also learning from hands-on activities. So, these are if they are the part of the teaching learning process, then only we will fulfill the expectations of EVS learning. So, what are the implications? What are the implications of the wide range of learning experiences pedagogical shift in the classroom? Number one, we should to act as a critical observer. To encourage children in a variety of activities rather than the seat work or the individual work in the classroom. 
to reflect which would give the opportunity for the self reflection or the peer reflection so that the objective of wide range of learning experiences shift could be fulfilled. Another significant pedagogical shift is the sequential arrangement of learning spiraling. This is uh, a every in every learning at the primary stage we can say that the sequential and spiral organization of learning is helpful for the cumulative learning. We can say here if the teacher plan lesson by taking into account the prior knowledge and experiences of the children that will help to take the learning more in a spiral manner rather than in a linear manner. We know the children are not learning in a linear manner. Linear manner mean we are taking one concept and the next concept without taking into cognizance of the previous concept. Say for example, I am taking here the food. Food is a theme in the environmental study class 3. If we are taking what the kind of food children are taking at home, what kind of food is available in the immediate surrounding. While in the class 4, we are just taking this diamond of the food theme, how the food children are getting, what are the various sources, without taking into, uh, repeat, without taking into cognizance of the what they have learned, what they know about the availability of the food in the vicinity. So, that kind of experiences if we are taking in a spiral manner based on the previous experiences, we can link the new learning. The integrated approach, what we mean by integrated approach? Integrated approach in the EVS is a bifold meaning. One way we can say integrated approach in EVS is an integration of various type of uh, components like the natural environment, social environment and the cultural environment. So, we are taking all the components in a multicentric manner. We are infusing all the natural sciences, social sciences and cultural component in an integrated manner. This we call it is an approach we are interdisciplinary. We are infusing the various dimension in a one subject. Another thing is integration in terms of the children's behavior. We are not considering the children behavior in isolation. The cognitive part is different uh, from the affective and as, as affective is different from the psychomotor. So, all type of development are go parallelly. We should take into account the uh, this behavior should be in a in a parallel way it should be simultaneously be taken care of rather than making the uh, EVS classroom learning in a uh, in a isolated manner the cognitive activities are different from the affective activities and affective activities are different from the psychomotor activities. So, activities should be designed in a manner which takes into account the different aspects of child behavior. Now, another significant feature of the EVS classroom which is the very important pedagogical shift is the contextualization of the content. We know the children are from various background. They are from the rural area, they are from the urban area, they are from the semi-rural area, some are the from the metro cities. How a teacher should address the content in the classroom? Because in the EVS learning is much much depends on the environment. So, the flexibility to adapt and contextualize curriculum as per the need of the children and accordingly she should design, she should select the examples related to child's life. I am I am giving you one example here say the plants or the animal teacher 
A EVS teacher cannot give example plants of the rural area in the urban or urban setup plants cannot be in a semi rural area. So likewise she has to contextualize the content in the classroom. So what are the implications for the teacher? She should design activities that are in terms of their local context. As per the local context of children, she must give the uh, examples. Help children to connect the connect and analyzing learning uh, from home to the community. Include different kind of activities in the learning process keeping into account the interest and preferences of the children. Use locally available learning resources rather than a generic kind of resources she should she should have maybe a newspaper clipping is a very important source resource of material a learning material but the newspapers local news or maybe the uh, the material which is locally available in the environment which is a very low cost should certainly be a more meaningful and accordingly she should contextualize the learning process now the social constructivist, this is again a very important dimension of EVS learning and it is reflecting a important pedagogical shift. And what is the important shift in the constructivism that we are giving primacy to the learner. It lays emphasis on learning by doing. I do I understand in a much, much better way. So we should give opportunity to interact with family members, peer and others. Because we know if the interaction will be more, the social interaction will be much, much more in the classroom by going, repeat, by taking group activities and so the construction of knowledge will be there. Another important dimension of social constructivism is the children will be involving, children will be involving in a, in a group activities and emphasis should be much more on the self reflection and self assessment. Now values and life skills, these are Again, a pedagogical shift which we are suggesting in the EVS material and we believe that this, these things should be addressed by in an infused model. We should not teach these values in isolation, but these are inbuilt part of the teaching learning process. Now, what should be the role of the teacher in this pedagogical shift learning for the teachers? It's a multi-centric strategies as we know the children learning through various ways. More opportunities for doing activities, group work, reflection for the children. Focus on developmental processes and skills rather than just covering of the content. The textbook chapter 1 she is completed. It does not mean you have achieved or ex your expectation of EVS learning is fulfilled. So focus should be more on the processes development by using a various kind of indicators for learning. Contextualization of the text is also important consideration for the teachers. Now, again for the teachers uh, caution keeping space for expressing own ideas or sharing their own point of view and not on right or wrong answers. The role of the teacher as learner and facilitator. She, she, she is not like a tutor, but she should keep herself as a learner or as a facilitator. Scope for discussion, asking questions, critical thinking and construction of knowledge is a, is a 
primacy be there in a classroom. We should encourage children to ask questions, reflect on own work, peer work, to develop the critical thinking. Assessment for learning should be taken as an inbuilt part rather than it should be taken in isolation so that the learning gap can be filled simultaneously rather than creating a learning gap more and more after completion of the learning. And reporting should be more comprehensive in manner which should be holistic. In conclusion, we can say the pedagogical shift of EVS curriculum and the transactional process emphasizes that the constructivism, contextualization of the material, wide range of learning, teaching learning strategies and the values and the integra in, in a integrated and infused manner if we will do in the classroom, the EVS learning will be more, more in a in a much, much qualitative manner and it will serve the purpose of EVS learning. Thank you.